Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, A Conversation with Death. The man who rules the world and the angel of darkness take on a horde of demons in this inaugural John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, A Conversation with Death for 99 cents on Kindle or in paperback today. Recently, Kwanzaa, the writer of the comic book Black AF, made several tweets on Twitter implying that non-white comic fans who are supporting Comicsgate are Uncle Tom's. Well, as a comic fan for over 35 years, I can honestly say that your Kwanzaa does not speak for me. And as a publisher of African American fantasy, I can also say that your Kwanzaa's viewpoints are not the same as mine. And as a publisher and as a black man, I have a critical question to ask your Kwanzaa. Who made you the authority to speak for all non-white comic fans, and how did your opinion become the only opinion for non-white comic fans? Because the hubris that your Kwanzaa presents on social media shows how full of this himself this Kwanzaa is to call comic fans like myself, Uncle Tom's, because we have a completely different opinion than your Kwanzaa has. Now, as a comic fan for over 35 years, I can honestly say that I agree with a lot of the positions that the Comicsgate supporters have. And the reason why I can agree with their positions is because after taking a critical look at the comic books that are produced by publishers like your Marvel Comics and many of these companies like Image, I can honestly say that this so-called campaign for diversity is a false campaign regarding diversity, and it really presents some of the worst stereotypes regarding pe black people and people of color in between the pages of a comic book. After reading comic books like your Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, your female Thor, your black Captain America, and your Asian Hulk, I can honestly say these are some of the worst comic books I have ever read in my life. And after reading other comics like this so-called pervert, I can honestly say that was one of the most disgusting comic books I ever read in my life. And I've read some really bad comic books in my time from the black and white period of the 1980s, where there were some really terrible comics out there. But these comic books that feature identity politics are some of the worst comic books I have ever had the, the a, a chance to read in my entire experience of the 35 years I've been reading comics. Because when it comes down to many of those comics, many of these comics are poorly written, many of these comics are poorly drawn, and many of these comics, they are not about telling stories with rich multidimensional characters and trying to tell a story that teach a lesson. No, these comics are all about promoting identity politics and pushing victim narratives. And that's not what a good comic book is all about. A good comic book is about telling a story that captivate, that grabs the reader, gets their attention, and then teaches them something about the human experience and the human condition, whether it be a superhero adventure, a slice of life comic, or a comic graphic novel that tells a story about a historical period or some sort of genre story. And we're not getting that from comic books today. Now, comic books today have become a propaganda piece for far-left ideologues, and these far-left ideologues, what they want to do is use comic books as a platform to push their propaganda narratives. And these propaganda narratives, what they are doing is alienating many comic fans and giving them no incentive to go out here and buy comic books. 
And if this is a position that people like your Kwanzaa disagree with, then there's something, as I believe it, wrong with them. Because the comic book industry was never designed to be a platform for propaganda. No, as a publisher who's been in the in a business with the SJS Direct imprint for over a decade and has studied the publishing industry and has worked in the publishing industry, I can tell you that what I'm seeing in the comic book industry is going to destroy it because no none of these people with these ideals have any understanding of business. In order for you to go out here and sell comics, you have to create product that the customer wants. And most customers have emphatically said they do not want these comics which feature these narratives from the far left. No, they do not want to see these false diversity characters because they know what actual diversity looks like. Actual diversity allows us to see a diversity of ideas, a diversity of stories, and a diversity of characters and allows us to see differences of opinion. And we're not getting that in many of these comics like Kwanzaa's Black AF. Now I had a chance to take a look at your Kwanzaa's Black AF and I did not see any sort of diversity of ideas. I saw many of the same ideas that many of your pro-blacks like to push regarding victimology, and I saw many of the narratives they like to push regarding conspiracy theories. And in your black AF, I saw a, these pro-black characters who hated white men, but, oh, but made an effort to try to bring an Asian woman into the story and make it look like she was some sort of heroine. Again, that's what the pro-black narrative is. They hate white men, but never a white woman or an Asian woman. So when I look at their books, again, I see all of this slant, but I don't see objectivity. And if you're going to tell stories, you have to be objective. You have to show a balanced picture of the action. And that's not something we're getting in comics today. And because we're not getting that in comics today, people don't have incentive to go out here and buy comic books on the regular. Because when it comes down to most people who go out here to buy comic books, most people who buy comic books, they want a story where they can get away from their problems for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and enjoy a laugh or a joke or two, and they can't get that escape because many of these people who are working in the comic book industry right now, they're so obsessed with pushing their political and social agendas that they don't see how they're alienating people by publishing this type of content. And this type of content, it does not appeal to anyone, and we clearly see that it doesn't appeal to anyone based on the sales numbers from Comicron. All you have to do is look at these Comicron sales, and you can clearly see that readers just aren't interested in those comics. But your Kwanzaa wants to sit there and tell not non-white comic fans that they're Uncle Tom's for disagreeing with him, but that's not the case at all. And again, who made your Kwanzaa the authority to speak for all non-white comic fans, and who made his opinion the only opinion for non-white comic fans? As a comic fan who is black and has been collecting comics since the late 1980s, I can tell you, your Kwanzaa does not speak for me. I am not an Uncle Tom. As a publisher who has gone out of his way to publish positive black fantasy fiction like the Isis series, the East Dean series, the Temptation of John Haynes, and the Spinsterella trilogy, I have made efforts to bring diversity to black readers by publishing books like African American Fantasy and books about African American goths or and books about African American sororities and producing a strong positive black male hero like a John Haynes. I have gone out of my way to bring diversity to black people with my books and as a guy who understands the need for diversity, I understand 
that there can't there should not be only one opinion and one viewpoint for the entire black community and I understand the agenda that your pro blacks like your Kwanzaa have because when it comes down to your pro blacks what they want to do is make these blanket statements like all so-called non-white comic fans who don't support him are Uncle Tom's because what they want to do again is create the concept of monolithic thought and once they create the concept of monolithic thought and have people following lockstep behind them they can then go to, to the white people and be the talented tenth over the black community and be the one who dictates the narrative over the black community and they use straw man arguments like saying that any accounts are trolls or they are robot accounts or they're fake accounts and again these are lies that they tell so they can make themselves look, appear to be bigger in the face of white people because when it comes down to the pro-black he wants to be the big man in front of white people and when I listen to guys like Kwanzaa they, they show us how insecure they are and how little they know about black comic fans because again I have been here for over 35 years. I've been here since the late 1970s when my brother and I would, would read comics together. And I have been on social media since 2011. And I have had these viewpoints regarding the comic book industry even before the year 2000 in that I saw the decline in the comic book industry and I've been writing about this again since 2011 the troubles that have been going on in the comic book industry and when I take a look at our comic book industry it is in the most dire situation it has been in the industry has been in a slump for over 20 years and ever since these far left people have entered the comic book industry it has been in free fall I have not seen numbers this bad in the history of comic books. I mean, these numbers for sales are some of the worst I have ever seen. And when you look at these numbers of, of what were once prominent comic books, that, like Superman and Batman and Spider-Man, barely selling forty to 50,000, that shows us how dire things are. But your Kwanzaa is going to sit there and say that a person like myself, who has been around for years before Comicscape, is a robot or is an Uncle Tom when that's not the case at all and as I deconstruct this Kwanzaa again I see nothing more than another pro-black back to Africa red black and green Negro who wants to try to speak for black people so he can get attention from white people and then as he gets his attention from white people what he wants to do is be the mouthpiece and the voice for those white people and then wants to be the talented tenth who dictates to black people well your Kwanzaa I'm gonna have to wake him up with this video because he does not speak for me he does not speak for the black comic fans out there he does not speak for the black sci-fi fans out there he does not speak for the black anime fans out there and he does not speak for all of those black comic fans out there and his opinion is not the only opinion and people are not black people are not Uncle Tom's because they disagree with them we see all these woke people trying to wake up the so-called industry but they don't see how their content is breaking the community because there's a reason why people are saying get woke and go broke is because the woke people don't see how they are alienating all those comic fans out there with their slanted and biased content and they don't see how those people have the economic power to put them out of business because when people see content that they do not like being published by companies like Marvel Comics, DC Comics and Image Comics they have a right to say that they're going to hold their wallet and vote with their wallets by not buying these comics and when they don't buy comics 50 comic book stores went out of business last year 
and even more are going out of business this year. But that doesn't stop these guys from petitioning their social and political agenda, which is destroying an industry and destroying a hobby that many people enjoy for years. And I look at this Kwanzaa again, and you have to listen, when you listen to his rhetoric, you see how full of crap this guy is, because he's got this audacity to sit there and say that anyone who disagrees with him is an Uncle Tom, when that whole position shows how much of an Uncle Tom he truly is. Because for you to sit there and say that people who don't support you are Uncle Tom's shows that you're all about monolithic thought and being the elite black who speaks for white people. And as that elite black who speaks for white people, you believe your opinion is the only opinion. Again, you do not speak for me. You do not speak for black comic fans. And as I see it, most black comic fans out there, they need to start speaking out and letting their voices be heard because that's the only way you're going to get actual diversity out here as related to the comics book industry. And when it comes down to actual diversity in the comics book industry, the issue we really need to be discussing is the fact that we don't have that many black comic creators working at places like your Marvel Comics, your DC Comics, your Image Comics, your Dark Horse, your Dynamite, and your Boom. And we also don't have any black editors at these companies. And this is the issue of diversity no one wants to talk about in the room because when it comes down to many of these comic publishers, they are fiefdoms for white women and they don't want anybody to challenge the fiefdom and bring actual diversity of ideas into these comic book publishing houses because that's where we desperately need the diversity at. We need to see more black comic pros coming into the industry because I talk to those black comic pros on the regular and those black comic pros tell me that they can't get any opportunities or for work as an artist or a writer and they definitely can't get any work as an editor and they want those opportunities to show their talent and abilities and outside of a select elite group of black folks they rarely ever get a chance to show their talents on the regular. And that's what's really sad about this Comicscape. We have all these people saying that this whole campaign is a bunch of racists when it's actually about trying to get good quality comics back on the shelves of comic book stores and trying to get the sales up of a dying industry and trying to fight for actual diversity in between the pages of comic books. Because to me, we're sitting here talking about that, that we have these people of color in these positions, but they're grossly unqualified for their positions. And qualified people, many of whom I know are, are great artists and great writers, they can't get in the door to even show their work at a Marvel or a DC, but they're sitting there talking about how diverse things are and showing how hypocritical and how racist many of these SJWs are regarding their position. Because I look at Comicscape from a critical perspective, and again, I see where the, the diversity can't, argument really needs to be discussed, but it's not being discussed because you have your guys, like your Kwanzaa, who really are talking about Uncle Tom's, but what they really want to be are gatekeepers for black artists and black writers, and they want to dictate what black artists and black writers come into the comic book industry and what narratives for stories get pushed in the comic book industry. And that's wrong because that prevents us from getting actual diversity in between the pages of comics, and it prevents us from seeing the richness of the black experience in between the pages of comics and seeing the diversity of stories as related to the black experience presented in between the pages of a comic book. If you want to see some pictures of actual diversity, you can pick up some of my SJS Direct publications like the ISIS series, 
the E-Steam series, The Temptation of John Haynes, and the Spinsterella Trilogy on Amazon.com by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, Escape from Transylvania. The goddess next door and John Haynes must escape a horde of vampires on the hunt in this horror-filled Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Escape from Transylvania in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.